new videos every day. Life, wisdom. There are a lot of really complex diets out there. Some of these diets require you to count calories, while others require you to focus on your macronutrients, so you eat all high carb or all low fat. Some diets even require you to basically memorize the glycemic index so you can determine which foods are going to spike your blood sugar or not. I mean, wow, some of these diets are really complex. There are a lot of articles and videos out there about the top 10 healthiest foods or the top 10 obesity causing foods or top alkalizing foods. And we've made some of these videos, but the problem with articles or videos like this is that they kind of require you to memorize which foods are good and which foods are bad. I mean, can't there be some simple ways of telling which foods are good and which foods are bad? I've been trying to come up with some simple guidelines and rules of thumb to give you guys to help you determine which foods are good to eat and which foods are bad to eat. And I came up with a handful of decent guidelines, and this video I'm just going to cover the very first one. But this one simple rule would dramatically improve the average person's diet. And if everyone in America followed this one simple rule, I think we'd see the rates of obesity and overweight cut nearly in half. And there's actually a significant amount of population and statistical data that validates that last statement. Although this rule might make eating a little less convenient, it doesn't create an extreme diet. It's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, and it's something sustainable that really just requires a little bit of common sense. You actually don't even have to know a whole lot about nutrition. And the rule is, don't eat anything that your grandmother didn't eat when she was your age. And notice that I said when she was your age, because if your grandmother is still alive, chances are she's eating the same things that you are, and she could very well be overweight, just like most Americans. But ask her if she was overweight when she was your age. And if she wasn't, find out what she ate and just eat that. So specifically, we're trying to target what people were eating in the early 1900s through the 1930s or 40s. Now, these specific exact obesity rates prior to 1950 aren't exactly known, but we do know that the obesity rates started increasing in the early 1900s. By 1950, the obesity rate was 10%, but now it has climbed to 30%. And in 1950, the rate of overweight was 33%, and now it has climbed to 70%. So it stands to reason that if everyone went back to the diet of the 1930s and 40s, that the obesity rate would start to decline. Now, granted, people live more sedentary lifestyles now than they did in 1950, so we might not see the obesity rate drop back down to 10, but we would see a significant decline in that obesity rate. Now, I do want to point out that the farther back in history you go, the healthier the diet is probably going to be. I mean, prior to the Industrial Revolution, all anybody had to eat was locally grown whole foods. Processed foods didn't really even exist, much less fertilizers, antibiotics, or any of these other food chemicals that are all over our current foods. And a lot of people have also found that the paleo diet, or caveman diet, is really helpful to them in losing weight and improving their health. But you don't have to go all the way back, you don't have to go quite that extreme, in order for this rule to still have some benefit in your diet. Even if we just go back to 1950, we're still going to have a much improved diet than what we are now. And we also know that in 1950, the obesity rate was a third what it is now. Now you're going to have to use a little common sense in applying this rule, because obviously Coca-Cola existed in 1950. You just have to realize that they didn't drink nearly as much of it then, and it also didn't contain high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup didn't begin being used in foods until after 1950, so that would be something you would have to eliminate from your diet. And they weren't genetically modifying foods in the 1950s either. Now, food manufacturers 
really don't want to tell you whether or not their foods are genetically modified. And food manufacturers have put pressure on the FDA to not require them to put that label. So at this point in time, foods that are genetically modified are not labeled as such, and you're just going to have to remember which foods you want to avoid. Now, the main five crops that are genetically modified include cotton, which includes cottonseed oil, canola, soybeans, sugar beets, and corn. And if there's any prepackaged food that contains any of those items, then you can pretty much assume, unless it says organic, and unless it specifically says no GMO, that that food is probably genetically modified. And they didn't have MSG in the 1950s either, so you're gonna have to eliminate that monosodium and disodium glutamate as well. And there weren't microwave dinners, or even microwaves for that matter, either. And while grandma may have indulged in a burger here and there, those burgers were nothing like the burgers that we eat today. And if you want a burger, that's fine. You're just gonna have to actually go to the butcher to get the meat and then eat it on a whole wheat bun that doesn't contain high fructose corn syrup. McDonald's wasn't franchised until 1955 and Taco Bell and Wendy's didn't exist back then either. So that means no fast food either. Now, if you knock out the fast food, microwave meals, high fructose corn syrup, genetic modification, and MSG, you might be thinking, damn, that's most of the foods. And well, it is most of the processed foods. So, oh my God, you might actually have to go to the grocery store and get fresh fruits and vegetables from the produce section, meat from the butcher, and cook it yourself. But hey, grandma was cooking for herself and people survived for tens of thousands of years cooking food for themselves. And guess what? They weren't as fat as we are today, and that's kind of the whole point. So there is a great rule of thumb that will dramatically improve your diet. It's really not that extreme, and it's really not that difficult either. Just remember that these rising obesity rates really happened at the same time with the rising prevalence of these chemically laden frankenfoods. And if we can turn back the clock a little bit, we can probably turn back our waistlines too. Back in grandma's day, her mama told her to finish her plate because the foods were good for her. And the foods actually were really good for her. But today's modern processed foods are not so good for us. And if we're finishing our plates, it's likely going to leave us fat, sick, and tired. But you don't have to be overweight, run down, and riddled with modern lifestyle diseases. The massive increase in the obesity rate is primarily the result of modern processed foods. So take a hint from grandma and get your health back on track. There are a lot of articles and videos out there stating that man is meant to be an herbivore and is not meant to eat meat. But is that true? In a future video, we're gonna tell ya. I've made plenty of videos telling you how to improve your health or be happier, but what about those of you who are annoyingly happy already? You just annoy people with your joy and positivity. In a future video, I'm going to tell you how to ruin your life. If your grandma was here, she would tell you to like my video. Be sure to share it with your friends and friend Psyche Truth on the Facebook. We all know that we're not supposed to eat fast foods, but giving them up can be extremely difficult. To learn more about why, check out my video fast foods designed to be addictive. For a simple guide to help you determine which foods are whole foods and which foods are processed foods, check out my video, Whole vs. Processed Foods. Is the average American diet making all of us sick? To find out more, check out our video on the average American diet. Modern technology has brought us a lot of brilliant advances. But have food chemicals helped us or are they actually killing us? Check out my video to find out.